to mourn the demise of one of the great modern artists of this country, Akbar Padamsi. Before we proceed, it would be appropriate that we stand for a minute in homage to him. Well, since Akbar Padamsi was one of those very rare artists who were very well versed in Indian philosophy and in Indian aesthetics, if he were he today here, he would say, it's a poon he aspired to achieve. Many of you knew him personally, and there are many here who would have known his art. Perhaps the most experimental and the daring artist of his generation, who combined in very creative, daring and imaginative ways the physical and the metaphysical, the sensuous and the spiritual, a master colorist went from cityscapes and landscapes to metascapes, made films, was in, uh, in, 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 in lit graphics and prints and photography. I, was, I saw an exhibition of his, of photography in Paris, and I came back and I rang him up and I said, I want some of these photographs because the penguins are publishing a book of mine. And he said, yeah, yeah, you choose from the catalog and let me know. Uh, I used to meet him in two connections. One, and perhaps Christian would recall, uh, we had organized an exhibition of Akbar Padamsi in Bhopal, as part of a Mukti Bodh Samaro. And he had done those heads. And so the whole uh, exhibition was of those. And Later, when Bharat Bhavan came into being, uh, and some of the artists who were helping Swaminathan in putting together and buying and selecting works, he was one of them. And I recall one late evening when they were, and there used to be big quarrels between them as to how the display should be, whether this should be there or that should be there. My job used to be to carry some samosas and kebabs and a bottle of old monk. And once I, in the midnight, way after midnight, I get a phone call from the Chokida saying, sir, three of these artists are sleeping on the floor in the gallery. And I said, why? He said, sir, he don't know. He said, he said, he said, he and one of them was Akbar. Uh, I thought Akbar was used to uh, great comfort and things of that kind. But there it was. Akbar had accompanied Swami Nathan to Bastar when Swami was going to pick up uh, uh, artworks. Then, of course, later I discovered that Mani Kaul, who was making a film for us at that time, uh, was also a great friend of um, both Kumar and uh, Akbar. And any time I went to Bombay, it would be either uh, at one, one of these three guys, and the other two will inevitably be there. And Akbar was a very sharp mind. 
sometimes even a sharp tongue. <laughs> but uh, uh, he would not speak out of turn. But when his turn came, he would speak very uh, precisely and very uh, sort of making uh, the point very articulate and clear. So Akbar will be remembered for many things by many friends. Uh, he used to bring another kind of rum from Bombay, which if I remember it is Contessa or something. And once we traveled together in the train from Bombay because we couldn't get the flight or something and there were very few flights to Bhopal anyway. So at some time when we were two of us and there were other passengers in the coupe. So he said, uh, how about some Contessa? So I didn't know what Contessa was. So I said, what did you say Contessa? So he said, well, well same thing. <laughs> So much to the discomfort of the fellow passengers, we poured, offered them, well, of course they politely declined, so much better because we wanted to save. Uh, anyway, so Akbar would be remembered for his liveliness, for he promoted a large number of young people uh, at that point of time. He was one of those who, who were deeply interested in what the younger people were doing and promoted some of them. Uh, he also promoted some people to indulge in uh, filmmaking or something like that. Uh, he bought a camera and many people were asked to do something of that side. So there are many, many things one could uh, remember. Uh, we have uh, Krishan Khanna who Many, many years ago, in another program that we had st I had started calling Looking at Art, had talked about, at length, about a painting that he owned from Akbar, the white painting. Uh, so Kushan Khanna is here, and maybe he would like to say something. I honestly don't know how to begin. He was a very, very close and a very dear friend of mine. Um, I can remember how we met. There was no introduction as such. In fact, there were never any, any introductions amongst painters. And I recall that in Chetna, I don't know if it's still there, uh, there was uh, an afternoon which was arranged by the people, by Chaitanya, uh, for the British, paint, British uh, poets who were coming. Orden was there, Spender was there, and um, I think it was really to felicitate them that paintings were hung uh, throughout the, on the, all the walls of this this particular restaurant and um, I saw Akbar's painting for the first time. I'd never met him before and it was um, of a madhouse, a largish painting of a ma of a which attracted attention I might add and uh, that's how it is, that's how I asked him about it. He said yes, and you know, you know, went on about this thing. Many years later, like hmm, twenty-five years later or something, I asked him. I said, "What happened to Madhouse and that painting?" He said, "You still remember that?" <laughs> I said, "Yes." Well, he had actually moved in his own work, as indeed all of us had, and we changed. Um, uh, but the um, it wasn't actually a cultivated friendship to start with. It was rather because the group used to meet. It was a sort of not a very organized group. People just met and chatted and talked and so on. And um, I saw him there, and we 
casually met, and then he went to Paris uh, with uh, Souza and uh, Raza, and they had this rather wonderful exhibition. Uh, he came back after that, and I was going up. I, by this is it's, uh, sometime end of 1961, if I recall because that's the year I resigned. I actually left the bank that year in December and I was coming up to Delhi. Akbar had just come back from Paris and Akbar said, I also want to go up to Delhi. I said, well, come, we'll drive. I, I just I had this car, you know, and he said, I'll drive halfway. So I said, very good. So, so one evening after we meet together, Baal and all of us, I had this car. He said, D -d -d I'd like to try it, you know. I said, yes, fine, get it. He must have driven about 50 yards in a marine drive. It suddenly stopped and said, I can't drive. I, I said, what do you mean you can't drive? He says, it's altogether different and everything, you know. I don't want to tax you, no, 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 and went on. I said, well, get into the car, I'll drive, I can drive, I know this <laughs> the city as well as the car. So don't worry, let's travel up to Delhi together. And he agreed, and it was, um, it was a wonderful meeting. One, they really got to know each other on that one, one to one, and driving together. We drove. <laughs> And as we were approaching, we talked a lot, of course. Uh, we were approaching um, Rajasthan. And uh, he said, we should, we should, I said, I think we should spend the night somewhere here, shouldn't we? He says, ah, uh -huh. okay, well, let's see. Where, is there a hotel here or something? I said, <laughs> that I doubt. But we will keep your eyes open and see what you can see. And sure enough, we spotted um, a little sort of a, not quite a jhopri, but uh, in that region, you know, this little sort of a shack affair. And there was a man standing there. So I drove up to him and I said, Raat um, uh, He said, Bilkul sahab, So we stopped. And we got in and um, I pulled out a bottle of whiskey and we saw the <laughs> travel, you know, people traveling. We were on one side and having a merry time. And the, my host also joined in, of course. And naturally, we talk about Rajasthan and those days the decoy trees and so on were, were well known, you know. So the subject came up. So this chap said, he said, um, he said, they're not interested in people like you. Uh, I, I said, well, why? How, how, how come? He says, they only go for rich people, you know, well attired, well, uh, so, you know, the upper class, and we've got money. And so I said, how, 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 how do they get to know this? He said, well, there's a sort of a, a chain of command that goes all the way, you see? A word is passed on from one to another to another, and then they finally uh, they nab the guy. You see, I said, uh, I mean, I said, fine. Then we sat there, and this chap was cooking his chicken for us somewhere, and I thought he was out of the way. <laughs> he, we and I sitting up was here. I'm here. I'm looking oh, the other way around. And he suddenly said, he says to me, he was talking about his family. You see. And how, how he was sort of reared into a financial family and a family that brought in the Dittmar lamp, which made millions, you see. So he was busy telling me about this uncle who brought this lamp from Germany and uh, how good it was and, you know, and all the, all the, all the goodies about it and the money that was going to shell in and so on. And suddenly he stopped <laughs> and he says, we are being watched <laughs> from the corner of the house, this chap was there. And I said, aye, 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 how is that bad? <laughs> he said, oh, okay, yeah, boy. Anyway, 
the evening passed away quite peacefully. And <laughs> there were two khatiyas in this room, so we occupied one each. And so uh, he said, you're tired. I said, a little bit, I suppose. But I said, I'm all right. And then, yeah, he said, well, uh, good night. I said, good, good, good night. He said, I expect, you know, by now, word has traveled all the way through the beer <laughs> on <laughs> <laughs> he, he always saw a thing, the situation, sometimes, in fact, quite often, to its absurd limit, you know, which made it very wonderful. <laughs> it's quite marvelous. It's something that everybody doesn't have. But this kind of, um, it's just a sense of humor and uh, a sense of perception all sort of rolled into one, you don't know what. I think so. so. I said, don't worry, we'll get them. So we traveled on next morning, and so it was okay, we went through. Then we were coming near, I was sort of working this out. You see, I said, we were about a little way away from um, Agra. And um, how about the Taj? You want to see it? He said, no, 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 he says, that's a, that's a ch <laughs> every chocolate box has a Taj on it, so let's leave that. I've seen the Taj, he said. So I said, okay, uh, we won't see the Taj. And I said, uh, and then uh, where should we go? He says, Mathura, Mathura would be a better thing. And there'd be some angelic ladies waiting for us there, you know. So he said, oh. Uh, I said, yes, that's... Uh, it's a very fertile land, that, and uh, it's well known and so on. And he says, ah, chaltem. I said, just remember that I am Krishna. But <laughs> <laughs> name that and <laughs> my intentions and everything, that's that. He says, Sunliya. <laughs> so we had, we missed Agra, we went ahead and something. Then he said, he says, uh, I said, So he looked around and went into the, we asked people, they said, ha, under a jaga hai in the street and so We went there and sure enough, there was a place which uh, sort of called itself some sort of a restaurant or something, eating place. And so we pressed the bell and the door opened and this young man came forward. He said, yes, what can I do for you? I said, you are advertising tiffins here, can you have a tiffin? He said, tiffin? At this hour? So I, I said, well, you know, we are hungry. He said, no, no, we don't suffer support tiffins at all odd hours. You know, there are specific hours for the tiffin. I said, I said, can you suggest where we can get a bit of something to eat? He said, I suggest you go to the Taj. <laughs> and in the, in the, in the circumference of the room, then the room, the little show, show, you know, you can buy coffee, eat sandwiches, and things like that. So, uh, so we backtracked, tracked, and we went to this place, and sure enough, there was a little place which was serving coffee and sandwiches, and we pitched into that. So I said, you know, Akbar, since we are here, uh, we might as well you know, take a look at this monument, you know. I, can you get the one? So he says, ha, huh, chill. So we, we went in and there's this, this edifice, this wonderful gate. It's the entrance to the Taj, actually. We went in there and saw the dome and the abstract geometry there, the linear play. We never could utter a word. We just looked up there and felt thoroughly stupid. <laughs> and then went on to see the Taj and enjoyed it, you know. And we came back to Delhi here and finally he was staying with us. My father-in-law who had a Barsati and we settled him in there and so on. Um, <coughs> But he came to Delhi much later to settle. He came with us there and then went on. He spent some time with us in Simla as well. And he got to know my parents and everybody. He was, you know, very friendly, of course. We all know that. Anybody who knew him can. 
he, um, which, yeah, I mean, I could sit here all night and sort of regale him with these odd, odd remarks, odd, odd, odd uh, incidents that happen. Uh, but the funny thing, the strange and the most important thing was, he'd had this exhibition and he painted a picture. I wasn't there when this happened, uh, which he called Lovers. And the police came and notified him. They said they would take this picture off. He said, no, no, it's, it's, it's not lewd, it's not dirty, it's, not, it's a work of mine. And, and, uh, so they went back and, and there he was served a notice. And there began a huge long story, you know. With, uh, he hired a lawyer uh, who was a young boy, <laughs> just passed out, never done any uh, work in the courts until then. This was his very first charge that he was doing. But when, they, when this was a, a meeting was called at the Bombay Art Society, and Leiden, and all the people who were, you know, Bombay was a very, very, uh, very electrically charged place at that time when art and things were concerned. Schlesinger was there, various men. Then there was also a, um, a man, uh, a very senior government officer. So when all this talk was going on, Akbar sort of said, God, he says, you know, there's no point talking. I think those who are not really interested in pursuing this and going to jail with me might as well leave, you know. Whereupon a few people did walk out. They didn't want to <laughs> go into jail. So thereafter, this man, this very senior uh, government officer, said, um, he got up and he said, Well, you know, really, I would like to join this, but I'm a, a government officer, I'm a government servant, and um, I really can't, can't do this much as I'd like to. Uh, and Akbar said, well, we have no time for servants here now, you, know, so you, you, you can go too. So, and <laughs> he was very brittle, but, but he was not tend to hoax mark you, but he was holding on to his particular position, you know. Um, <laughs> and he knew, I mean, when he was getting into the van, and they, when the police came to arrest him and so on, and they take him, uh, they said, oh, get in. He said, no, I have, I'm not, in, I'm not being charged with anything yet. You get in there, I'll sit in front. <laughs> that, that, that's how they went and they got off, you know. It's actually thanks to Mr. Dr. Uh, to, to Mr. Chagra that he uh, won this case. And it is actually, a, um, it's a record, recorded case and it's case history, which was made. He didn't make much of it, but um, and that's what happened there. Well, when I came back from the States, I think at that time, I uh, we went to see him, I said, give me the full story. Oh, he said, you know, it's tiresome, but um, anyway, all this happened finally, and uh, I'm through with it. And I, I said, where, where is that picture, the disputed picture? He said, you've been looking at it all the time, you know, it's right in front. I said, what? He said, yes. You see, I was charged. The charge read like, he has got his right hand on her left breast. That is the bad thing. <laughs> so we laughed and so on. And a day after that, it didn't finish here, you see. Uh, these things do have sort of repercussions. And a man came, a man knocked at his door and said, uh, Mr. Padamsi, said, yes. Um, congratulations. He said, thank you, thank you very much. These people are very stupid. And they're very ugly. They don't know what to do. And they don't know what is good for them. So I will let him in and they sat down. He said, you and I have a lot in common. Really? Yeah. And then he produced a little notebook. And he said, see this? So, I <laughs> said, yeah, what about it? I mean, I read it, look at it. And it was all addresses of young ladies in Bombay. <laughs> yeah. 
to Akbar saw this. Yeah, you know, Akbar could be very violent at times. And this was on one occasion he did. He took this book, he was on the first floor, he threw the book down and he kicked this guy out. He said, get out. He said, I don't want to be associated with you. And that's that, you know. So that's the kind of chap he was. Um, about his painting. You know, he recognized very early that he, he was, uh, he studied color very, very scientifically. Paul Clay was his uh, great mentor, in fact. But when it came to his own work, uh, he, he could talk about Paul Clay like I am, you know, very erudite about him, but uh, he didn't paint uh, 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 at all like Paul Clay. I, you know, funny, Paul Clay was a great influence at one time. I mean, Guy Thonde was influenced by Paul Clay in that sense, so were others, but not, never Rakhba. Uh, he recognized um, that he was very familiar and had a deep understanding of certain colors and the use of those colors and the um, the declension of those colors also. He didn't really struggle out of those at all, you know. And uh, I think it's wonderful that he recognized that this was this was the the barriers, the 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 ambits that he was creating for himself, you know, which quite naturally then uh, went on to his black and white pictures, and those. Uh, where color was not uh, in, in, in question at all, and gave him a certain freedom of, to how to formulate a canvas, uh, how to formulate space, in fact. That was really what his, he was interested in. And he, he did that absolutely magnificently. He, 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 turned, he turned up one day, you know, and uh, Produced these long, huge paintings. I mean, he did something called Juhu, uh, which was shown in London as well. Gita, I remember. Um, it occupied the whole length of the war, you know. And it was then shown in Bombay somewhere, I mean, Hyderabad, I think. And <laughs> big as it is, it got lost. Um, nobody knows where it went, and nobody still does. But the other painting which he did, at the same time, not quite as big, but big, big enough. I, we got, I was in Kanpur at the time. I was working in a bank, and on a Saturday I'd get my nail, you know, part of, which I couldn't look at whilst I was in the bank. I carried this back to the house, which is in the same uh, ambiance. <coughs> and uh, the first thing which I opened was this was this rather long envelope with this picture thing. And I looked at it and I said, it's a, it's a marvelous painting. It's this thing. And I said to Reno, who was my wife, who said, I said, you yeah, know, there's some chap painting there and we don't know his existence. I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful painting. And then I turned over and it was Akbar Padam Singh. I said, the old rogue, you know, just hiding behind us <laughs> to give a shock. And so, I called up Bal Chhabra, who was having this exhibition. So I said to Bal, I said, Bal, you know, I've got your invitation for the show. Um, this painting, which is on the, is it, uh, have you sold it? He said, no, 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 I haven't sold it yet. People are interested. I said, yeah, so am I. He said, kyu, the three, four years? I said, ha, thodi you know. So I said, uh, what does it cost? He said, 3,000 rupees. I said, oh, okay. He said, hang on. Uh, if you're buying it, and you're part of the group and the family, so to speak, so I'll forgo my commission of, of, of uh, a thousand. And he says, good news for you. I've sold, I've sold a big drawing of yours also for another thousand. So all you have to do is to send me a thousand which I did pronto, 
<laughs> sell it off. And the painting came, and it was so large. I mean, I would have to have this thing stretched out by two people across, sit back, you know, like an old mogul, <laughs> and enjoy the picture, and then roll it back again and put it up. I mean, you know, I didn't know how long I was going to be stationed in, uh, uh, with Grindley's in, um, in Kanpur, or indeed with Grindley's at all. You know, that was on the cards at that time. Um, so I owned the painting, and then Akbar rang up. He says, so we've got the painting. I said, yeah, I've got the painting. He said, now, you know, Lalit Kala, uh, they're having an, an exhibition which they're sending abroad, and it's going to take a year and so on. So I suggested that uh, they borrow this painting f from you uh, for a year, and they'll send it around the world and so on. And, you know, the, the, the one, people are a little frightened to loan their paintings now, but at that stage, it was it, the done thing to send. I mean, to, to expose an artist all over, it was the sort of a, a duty. You couldn't say no to this thing. So I said, okay. And then, soon uh, the painting went. And I also left the bank, and I too went, you know. So for one year, the painting was in circulation, and I was, and I came back. There was a call from Lalit Kala to say, uh, Sir, yeah, I said, mm -hmm. your painting is back. I said, very good, uh, but, but uh, it's uh, damaged. I said, what do you mean damaged? You know, he said, no, no, there's good, this good, 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 good news too. I said, yeah. He said, the insurance company is paying for it, and there's 10,000 rupees coming in. So I said, well, that's marvelous, but... Um, don't do anything, I'll come and see it first, and then we will decide. So, off I went, I saw the painting. It had been very badly packed, with straw underneath it, which was pushing up bits and pieces, you know, it's a lumpy, the painting became lumpy. But otherwise, the quality of paint, etc., was absolutely wonderful. It was, it was in acrylic, actually, that painting was done. So, um, I said, okay, I'll take the damaged painting, but you give me half. <laughs> so they said, fine, you know, and the bank was getting rid of the liability. So I came back 5,000 5, rupees. Akbar was in Bombay, in Delhi at that time. So I said, I said, I, said, I made money on your painting. <laughs> so he says, how? I said, I sent you, you asked me to send it, I sent it and I came back and they gave me the painting back and 5,000 bucks, you know. Oh, mm -hmm. he was, you know, he used to chew his, <laughs> his handkerchief and he said, he said, that's not fair. I said, what do you mean it's not fair? You've been paid for the painting, what more do you want? He said, no, no, I said, you're quite right. It's all, it's all sort of, the, it's a whirlwind which has created this situation. He says, I'll tell you what, Baal, you see, Baal, Baal was like the great fellow who kept the monkeys at bay doing things, so he was coming to, to Delhi. And he said, we'll, we'll leave Baal to decide. After all, he's our gallery man, you know, so. So in walks Baal after you know a few days, and <clears throat> he's made aware of the situation that there's this five thousand rupees going a begging, and uh, what shall we do about it? So Baal sort of scratches him and he says, "Well, uh, one thousand comes to me <laughs> because that was the commission that he had not taken. You see, so that he was taking his commission." In retrospect, <laughs> I said, okay, fair is fair. Then he says, another thousand goes to Akbar. After all, he painted the picture. Okay. <laughs> so the five, three thousand comes to me. So Akbar looks at me and says, man, you, you said you and Baal should decide. Baal's decided. Uh, I have no say in the matter except to accept what Baal has said. You know? <laughs> so this kind of thing went on and on and on. <laughs> I tell you, it was so funny. Um, 
the painting was with me till very recently, till it, till I we my son and I were sitting in my sitting room. I'd asked the uh, help to make me a toast, uh, which he was doing, and then we suddenly smelt, you know, smoke. So Karan broke and said, Daddy, there's, there's something burning, burning. You? <laughs> and there was this toaster right underneath this painting, flames going up. And he rushed, threw this <laughs> thing down on the floor. The fellow in the meantime had gone to fetch a bucket of water or something. No, 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 don't do that. But the painting said, then you see, then the family conference on this one is. I've got so many paintings and things around and there's nobody to look after them, you see. So yes, and yeah. So he says, Daddy, the painting went through the similar kind. His very first falling figure, which I bought, he put that. There was a small Gaitante which I had, which Malti, I had consigned it to Malti. So we sold all three together at very good prices and shared the whole thing between three kids in equal proportion. <laughs> so that, that was the apex. But I said before the painting goes, I want uh, a copy, you know, a digital. And there it is. I don't mind, you know, people are rather snobbish about originals and all that. Of course, there's a point in that. But I see this painting every day. As far as I'm concerned, it never went out of the farm. It's there all occupying that space, huge thing, and I enjoy it, you know. I talk with it. <laughs> but um, what else? The other thing I can mention before I flake out is... Um, when I was um, advising uh, ITC, that's the took Empire Tobacco Company, on they were uh, Ajit Haksa was one for. He was wanting that there should be art here, and you know, quite apart from the, he wanted me to do the lobby, which I did. But um, he said you buy stuff. So I, each one, you know, all these guys were, were commissioned. You paint what you like. The size is this. And you can split it in twos, threes, whatever you like. And every one of us got 21,000 rupees for each painting. <laughs> and Akbar did, I think, to my mind, just about the two. The, it, it's, a single, it's a single painting, but what he was doing was uh, the, uh, yeah. Um, and that was, again, a wonderful, wonderful twist that he was giving, you know, a change. Uh, they have the two of the best upwards that uh, I've, I've known, you know. Um, quite apart from all this, there were long gaps. Uh, when I was in, 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 in America, he was in Paris, and even in, and we corresponded. And there's a large quantum of correspondence between us, which is uh, he's, I think his wife has got my letters, or he had my letters, I've got all his letters, which are obviously much better. <laughs> and they're, they're a delight to read. I'm going to ask the, <laughs> the, you know, the other foundation, they printed other letters and so on. Um, to, I think this volume should come out. <laughs> Maybe with some of my letters, which are with with, her, with his wife, and others are all with me. I never destroyed a letter. <laughs> well, it's very funny, you know. We're here talking about him, and in that very talk, the uh, he comes in and he. There's a, there's a wonderful poem, actually, which, a Chinese poem, which says, uh, Lady Yang gone, the peony face behind a fan of frost, the blue moon eyebrow behind a fan of rain, beyond recall by any alchemist or incantation from the Book of Change.
but in the thinking and the saying so, do they enter into our lives. And we become the voice with which they speak, for duration, short or long. It's the Clitonic song. Thank you. Kumar Shahani. Actually, um, many of the people here I came to know who are here, Krishan, Gita, and uh, others that are not in view, uh, but in Delhi, from Delhi, I came to know, met them first time at Akbar's uh, Tahir Mansion. Uh, <clears throat> And um, today, of course, I, I cannot match the, the kind of, uh, you know, mine of uh, remembrances that Krishna has. But uh, I'm remembering especially those years that <coughs> um, were the first years after I came back from Paris. So that, that was a kind of... Um, sort of uh, background to our meeting in a way, you know, and, and discussing things. And um, our relationship was very fraught, very polemical all the time, uh, throughout. And he used to love arguments, and so did I. Um, and we never, never agreed on anything, virtually. But sometimes he would say some things and tell me, you know, Actually, I don't mean what I said about this. Uh, I like the work of so and so a lot. One of them is here, and I think I've told Vivan that. You know, he would be so polemical about any opinion that he had that he would go overboard, and then I would say, You don't really mean it, and he wouldn't immediately. Uh, say whether he did or not. But it was very important for him to discuss things through in that, that way. And there were few people like that in Bombay at that time. Um, so, uh, it, as I said, it was very fraught and sometimes uh, it would come to a kind of breaking point because you know, he was quite passionate about things like um, color theory, aesthetics, and um, and the the politics of the whole situation. But a person who would always change him in that mode and in a very nice way was Raisa, and I'm remembering her a lot today. In fact, both my daughters have sent me a reminder that. Uh, I must call Raisa, and Raisa uh, has been a host to me as well in Paris. I remember once Vivan and I went to her place when we were invited by the President of France. We preferred to go to her place. And uh, she had done a very special meal for us. And my two daughters are also extremely fond of her, and one of them has actually named her little one after Raisa. So, uh, one of the things that struck me when uh, Christian was speaking was the use of the word, the declension of color, you know. That's something that I learned from Akbar. Uh, that uh, there was a kind of grammar to color, to to color, which has to be uh, respected, and that uh, also meant that we open up to modes of thought which are different. Because if you change the grammatical construction, you obviously think of the mode of thought that is going into 
into a certain declension. And um, this is something then one keeps on thinking of as uh, a very, very primary uh, difference between you know, thought which is verbal and thought which is non-verbal. And of course we know that there are different lobes of the brain for that. Uh, and they are in conflict, etc. So these were the kind of questions that we kept on uh, discussing all the time uh, with his other friends as well. Maybe I picked up a quarrel with you, and it's time to apologize for that. Because we used to discuss it with great passion. And uh, Akbar was always trying to open up to whatever he saw in in the amongst the youngest and even uh, not only just younger people but the technologies which were appearing in imaging you know so for a while he experimented with the computer thing and he said I won't use my hands at all I'll just do things through the computer through mathematical equations I thought that was a disaster, but anyway, uh, and I told him so, if we were always frank enough about that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, surprisingly, again, after a while, he agreed that it was a kind of disaster, and he gave it up. So, so he started uh, painting again like he used to do before. And, of course, uh, one of the great things is all of you... I know seem to like that painting called Juhu yeah. and it was also stunning for me when I first saw it. It was in a retrospective. I had known him for some time at that time. I think it's a great masterpiece which should be celebrated over and over again. And of course Gita has written an absolutely marvelous <coughs> piece on it and in connection with that Akbar had asked me that at that time when the retrospective was going on whether I would like to make a film on some of his work or and I said that's the painting I would like to make a film on and he said just that painting I said yes I do want to make a film on that painting and uh, he said uh, so it'll be in color I I said, yes, it'll be in color. In fact, he said, it won't work. He didn't, he, asked, he didn't ask me whether it'll be in color. He said, it won't work that you make a film on that painting because it is in black and white. <laughs> you know? So I said, no, I insist that I'll make this film in color. And uh, he said, why? So... Uh, we had a long chat. I couldn't quite say why, because how could you? I didn't know the process through which he had come upon that relationship of the greys through um, actually seeing how a grey renders a colour and the whole spectrum. So, and of course Gita's essay uh, shows it in detail of how it is done. So again, one goes back to this idea of the declension of, you know, uh, form and color and so on. And I think it helped him a lot to understand what Ashok mentioned about um, Indian aesthetics, which is deeply linked with linguistical, linguistical sciences. You know? So that is the position of, like the position of the word, the position of the subject or the object. Here is the position according to the de declension of this or that, which creates a different pattern of thought, which can never be stated in any other but a visual form. Thanks. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. I remember having seen a theatrical production by Kumar, which had a backdrop or, or a canopy done by Akbar. Yeah, which had a kind of uh, object. 
Ah, yeah, it's called. Who was in the Fibonacci series? Yeah, yeah. Draupadi, or what was it? Yeah, it was uh, Kunti. Ah, Kunti. Yes, that's right. Gita Kapoor. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, in my usual, somewhat stubborn way, read the small uh, piece of tribute, small tribute that I would like to offer Akbar today. I just want to preface it by saying that Krishna doesn't probably remember, or he may remember, that I met Krishan and uh, Akbar together in New York when I was 21 years old, which is in 64, 1964. I was studying in New York and I think Krishan introduced me to Akbar and I used to spend a lot of time with them. I think Krishan was showing his paintings in the Charles Egan Gallery and Akbar was on a Rockefeller fellowship. So I have a together memory of Krishan and Akbar. And I then this means new Akbar since 1964, which is a very long time. Akbar has passed on and left us with the sense of an absence that will evolve into grace. A remote presence with a visible aura. A year ago, in January 2019, I spoke on him and to him at a felicitation function organized by the Asia Society in Bombay. On this occasion, when he saw a row of us speaking in praise of him, he looked vulnerable and benign. But he was already unreachable. As I said there, what I say today, to him who has gone away, and he did then, as he will do now, today, smile and twitch and raise his tapered fingers to his face in a nervous gesture of self-protection. So I start with Akbar's eyes, with a look that was always so deeply inward, and his persona that was grave and liminal. It was the presence of one who may be the blind oracle, whose stare frightened, whose stare frightened his teacher when he was a little boy, and whose gaze, when he became an artist, claimed access to esoteric truth. We look at him and look at the eyes of his masked portraits, sockets with dilated pupils, heavy-lidded omniscience. I had known him to assume on occasion the solemn expression of one of his 1950s prophets. Yet Akbar's hypnotic look was intensity that redoubled as anxiety. Akbar as artist was positioned in the space where the precarity characterizing existence translates into what the artist believes is a metaphysical understanding of the universe. In this meta space, the image reveals itself. This revelation continued from the 1960s to the end of his life. Conversely, his landscapes rest in a condition of hypostasis, a condition that combines essentialized substance, an eruptive substructure, and impended, an impending stasis. I don't, I don't seek an image, I can hear Akbar say. I create conditions whereby it may come, into be, come to be. Yeah. I'll say that again. I don't seek an image, I can hear Akbar say. I create conditions whereby it may come to be. Yes. It is a matter of systematic practice and a form of a form of signification that is material, but is also equally a spectral double of emergent thought. Like his great gray paintings of the female nude in 1960. In both senses, the image is imminent. 
whether embedded in, conce in a conceptual schema or in the density of pigment. The image is to be lifted from the grid and made to endure, and it regain its own philosophic dimension at some moment of its becoming. When as a very young man, Akbar met Giacometti, the artist he admired most, he was told by Giacometti in cryptic terms that he should be interested not in life, no, sorry, that he should be in, interested not in art, but in life. It is difficult to say whether Akbar lived more of life or art, but Ashim Aluwalia's short film on Akbar, which was shown at the Kirinada Museum in uh, 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 an exhibition last year, Ashim uh, Aluwalia's film titled Events in a Cloud Chamber from 2016 is precisely about this interposition between art and life. It was made when Akbar was already very frail. Akbar is painter, philosopher, and conceptually inclined artist. He seemed to calculate spaces, craft color, device schema, and animate geometry. And he holds the brush in his fingers with a mannered elegance, just so it touches the canvas and deposits the load of pure color on its surface. He's also shown exercising his enfeebled limbs and dreaming. He passes the test of time and appears as an ascetic of mid 20th century modernism, who mastered the medium and offered a vision. The film is oneric. The submission of this painter's life to the space of the unconscious is peculiarly appropriate. Akbar's prescience included always a chance encounter with the uncanny. But here is Akbar behind us looking actually very, um, very giving of himself. I'm not sure between his giving and his withdrawal what sort of spaces he traversed. And these were very internal spaces. Kiran Nadar. Good evening, friends. We gathered here to, play, to pay tribute to one of the greatest painters of our generation and one of the last few of that generation who remain. We have been blessed to have these doyans of Indian art who have lived with us for all these years. And it is sad to see them go today. But I would just like to say that Akbar was one of the few members of the Bombay Progressive <coughs> group of artists who did a great deal to enliven my life. He taught me a lot about art. I have no art background as such. And whatever I have learned has been from looking at these painters and getting them to be uh, found in our museum and displaying the works. As far as Akbar was concerned, one of the first major works, or not one of the first, but one of the major works that I did acquire was a grey nude. And I remember when we displayed this painting at the museum uh, in, a, in an exhibition called Crossings, Akbar had come to the show and he was looking at the painting and I was standing with him and he told me that <clears throat> this painting was hanging in a hotel, I think in Paris. Yes. And he said, I'm so pleased that you have brought it back to India. It brings back huge memories for me. And it was, it was a great feeling to me. Since then, I have tried to acquire another great painting. Unfortunately, I was unsuccessful. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the person who owned that great painting is in the room. 
<laughs> yes, Titian's painting. But, but since then I have acquired another painting uh, of, of the similar theme. So it's okay, Christian. You're forgiven. <laughs> the painting on Juhu, uh, we have many stories. Some stories that it is lying under some bed in Bombay. Uh, who knows? But it will, I think one day it will appear because it could not have got destroyed or disappeared. Akbar was one, one artist who had so many different mediums that he employed. He, he worked with figurative art, he worked with abstract art, he worked with film, he worked with all kinds of imagery. And the personality of the person was built of all these various aspects that he displayed. And it's an amazing thing to look at Metascapes and the grey nude, which are so different in, in uh, what they display, and yet they are thoughts of a single painter. He, he was a great, uh, I think he left behind a lot of people who he influenced. People um, of like, uh, let's say, some of the ones of, of this like Nalli Malani, so to speak, or, um, or others who have uh, learned from him and progressed the art. This has been a particularly uh, difficult moment for all art lovers. I only have one um, thing that I would like to comment on is the lack of artists today to pay tribute to Akbar. We have a paucity of people from the art world who are here. I think this should be corrected and we should not forget them in a hurry. I'd just like to thank everybody who has made the effort to come here and I hope that Akbar's memories will live long. Thank you very much. Remember that I met uh, Akbar's French wife, Solange or some such name. She was a doctor, I think. And only last month when I had gone to Paris in some connection with co copyright dispute, I met Raisa. And uh, as someone said, Raisa is, 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 is really a lot of Akbar I see in Raisa. Uh, the way she reacts and the she, way she asserts in spite of her disability and all that. Uh, so thanks a lot for coming. Uh, we had already offered to publish the correspondence between Akbar and Krishan from the foundation. We had also offered to them that if the material is given to us, we can just as we have done the Raza archives, we'll do archives of whoever is willing to give us the material. Uh, and we plan to do something more substantial uh, about Akbar very soon. Let me remind you that Akbar and Raza travel together in the same ship to arrive in France in 1950. And we have in our archives, I saw it only the other day, uh, a kind of an invitation of an exhibition of uh, Raza and Padamsi in Paris. No, this is the one which I, everybody knows Suza, Akbar and Raza show, which is 1950 something. But this is 1953, when the two of them have shown in some, I forget the name of the gallery. I'm not very good at announcing these French names. So, thank you very much for coming.